Hello learners, welcome to our channel. Today, I am here with the new topic that is vaginal route for drug delivery. The contents to be covered are what is vagina and vaginal drug delivery, the ideal properties of it, bacteria present in the vagina, challenges and some formulation approaches. So, what is vagina? It is a muscular canal lined with the nerves and mucous membranes. As we can see in the diagram, it has a uterine vein and uterine artery and it has a vaginal artery. It also has muscle layer, connective tissue and squamous epithelium. So it connects the uterus and the cervix with the outside body allowing the menstruation and childbirth. Now we can see the layers of vagina. So the first layer includes mucus, then stratified epithelium, lamina proferia, fibromuscular layer and adventita. So the vaginal drug delivery. Now what is vaginal drug delivery? So the introduction of the drugs into the vaginal canal is known as vaginal drug delivery. It can be of two types. It can be local or systemic. And the vaginal drug delivery system are used to treat the local problems such as infections, vaginitis and labor induction and prevention. So many pharmacological active chemicals can be used that are antimicrobial, antifungal, antiprotozoal, antiviral, labor inducers, pharmacidal agents, sex hormones have been developed for vaginal administration. Now here we have taken the example of mucoadhesive dosage form. So here we have a vaginal cavity and from that the drug molecules will pass to the mucus layer. And there are many types of delivery system. So it includes gel, tablet, suppository vaginal rings and films. Now what are the ideal properties for the drug delivery? So it should have no adverse effect on coitus. It should be odorless and colorless. It should be appropriate for the use several hours before the intercourse. It shouldn't cause leakiness, messiness or sensational of the vaginal fullness. It should have no local discomfort or irritation and it can be easily applied with or without an applicator. So here the patient compliance should be there. As we know that there is an interesting fact for the vagina that some bacteria are present. So which bacteria are present? Generally, lactobacilli are the common bacteria which are present and they constitute of 95% of the bacteria. What is the function or how do they work? So, they prevent the other bacteria from adhering to the epithelial cells. And how do they do? They produce the lactic acid which kills and inhibits the development of other bacteria. So, other bacteria which causes our infection will be killed by the lactobacilli bacteria. And this process is carried out by acidification of the vagina to a pH range of 3 to 4.5, which inhibit the development of other bacteria. Now, lactobacilli have two kinds of mechanisms. The first one is that it binds to the vaginal epithelial cells and will compete with the other microbes to an infection of the cells. And second is that they produce soluble components that prevent the other bacteria from attaching to the epithelial cell membrane. So these are the mem uh, these are the two mechanisms by which the lactobacilli works and vagina is protected by the lactobacilli bacteria. So we move forward to the challenges. As we know that vagina has many of the things to be considered there like pH, enzyme activities, microbial flora etc. So we move forward to the vaginal secretions. The vaginal discharge is a combination of secretion from the peritoneum, follicular, tubular, uterine, batolins and skein's glands that accumulate the vagina. So we need to prevent the discomfort in the users. So the solid dosage form mainly should have dissolved in the vaginal cavity shortly after the insertion in the presence of moisture. So there won't be any discomfort. So this is a challenge we need to overcome that it should get dissolved faster and quicker to avoid the discomfort. Then second is the enzymatic activity. So the human vagina has less enzymatic activity than the stomach. So here we can have a chance that we can give the drugs like protein and peptides in the vagina. But 
there are the chances of enzymatic activity. So this is a challenge for us. And enzyme activity affects the drug absorption and long term stability of the intravaginal devices. So this should be taken into the mind for preparing the vaginal drug delivery system. Now the other comes that is vaginal pH. So as we have discussed earlier that the vaginal pH should be 3.5 to 4.5 that is acidic pH. So there is a probable breakdown of the medication in the vaginal lumen. Then the contact time as we know that our formulation only decides the contact time. If the amount of the flow and the retention of the drug is been maintained, our formulation will be sticking for a longer time that is mostly the mucoadhesive drug delivery system. We can increase the contact time by adding such polymers. Concentration the rate of absorption via the passive diffusion can be increased by increasing the drug concentration in the vaginal fluid. As we know that so much or high drug concentration can cause a severe local irritation. So the drug concentration should be checked before the formulation of the vaginal drug delivery system. Now comes the release of the drug. So as we know that we have a small volume of vaginal fluid. So it is a rate limiting step for the dissolution. And the dissolution of the drug will be difficult. Now comes the region and area of the contact. So as we know that the surface area is very less that is roughly 60 cm square. So the drug should be deposited is affected by the formulation. So the extent to which the formulation distribute throughout the vagina is influenced by the hydrophilicity and viscosity. The ideal APIs which are used to administer the drugs include antimicrobial spermicides, antimitotics and introduce the drug into the systemic circulation which are usually for hormonal treatment or contraceptions. So the list of the APIs are given here. This include progesterone, estrogen, dinoprostone, nonoxanol 9, benzalkonium chloride, clindamycin sulfate, neomycin sulfate, butaconazole nitrate, Miconazole nitrate and clotrimazole. Now, what are the ideal excipients for vaginal drug delivery? So, first include penetration enhancers. So, as we know that penetration enhancers promote the drug absorption, but what is the mechanism? So, they lower the penetration barrier of the vaginal mucosa and increase the penetration through the vaginal mucosa. Some non ionic surface active compounds. Benzalkonium chloride, hyaluronic acid, PG that is polyethylene glycol are the most common penetration enhancers. Now second is the solubility modifiers. So drugs low solubility stimulated vaginal fluid may change the release pattern of the medication from its device influencing the drug onset and the therapeutic efficacy. So here as we discussed earlier water soluble drugs are ideal for the vaginal administration and it can be increased by addition of the citric acid, sorbitant, twin eighty, polyoxyethylene and its and alkyl esters, polyoxamers and cyclodextrins. The most important ingredient is the mucoadhesive agents. So as we know that they stick to the membrane or the mucus layer. So they are promoting the addition and allowing the formulation to have the contact with the vaginal mucosal surface. This include hyaluronic acid, chitosine, sodium alginate, tragacan, carbopol, acacia, sodium carboxymethyl cellulose and other cellulose derivatives and carbopol. Now comes the polymer. So there are different types of polymer which are generally been used and some are discussed below. The first one is pectin. As we know that pectin is studied for the vaginal drug delivery as a mucoadhesive components. So their pH dependent activity have a significant impact on the drug release mechanism. Now comes the alginate. Alginates are biocompatible and biodegradable. So they are widely used and they are also occurred naturally. And out of all the alginates, sodium alginate is mostly used for the pharmaceutical purposes. Alginates can be used in liquid and semi-solid pharmaceuticals formulations as a thickener and stabilizers. Now the other one comes that is starch. 
as we know that it is the most abundant plant polysaccharide and is a primary carbohydrate in the human diet in starch so it is made up of two components that is linear amylose and branch amylopectin and starch is generally used for gel preparation as it swells at higher temperatures so now comes the other that is gelatin so gelatin is a natural polymer which is obtained from the animal cartilage and bones and they also have the property for vaginal drug delivery system yes it is advantageous because it has excellent viability and biodegradability and they are also used for soft and hard gelatin capsules now comes the xanthan gum which is a microbial polysaccharide and is obtained from the fermentation process of the cabbage plant which is xanthomonas campate stress it is a stabilizer and it is used in emulsions and suspension and it also contains a swelling properties and so it is used in the thickening agent in the topical dosage forms what are the advantages of vaginal drug delivery the first one is avoidance of the first pass effect avoidance of the enzymatic deactivation in the git it is a large permeation area rich vascularization and low enzymatic activity compared to the stomach non invasive self insertion and removal of the dosage from like vaginal fills gel specialties etc so the patient compliance is increased the disadvantages include cultural sensitivity personal hygiene local irritation influence of the sexual intercourse menstruation cycle associated vaginal changes and sometimes leakage of the drugs from the vagina and wetting of the undergarments I hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe the channel for more informative videos.